afternoon, everyone. My name is Tim Abraham, an electrical engineering major. This is Lance Hansel. He's an electrical engineering major. This is Jerry Layton. He's a CE, ME, Jerry Engineering Engineer. This is Jonathan Davin. He is an electrical engineer. This is Ms. Sue Zari. He's also is an electrical engineer. Um, uh, let me divide up the parts real quick. Me and Ms. Sue worked on the button board and power board for our project. Um, Jonathan and Lance worked on mounting and program application uh, for the button board. And Jerry worked on uh, tweaking the program for our portability use. Um, from last semester, um, if you remember, we had an eye tracking um, software um, that tracked your eye um, with a camera, a webcam, gave it to a Raspberry Pi, which gave it, uh, pro which processed the information, translated that information to positional uh, information by PWM signals and sent it to servers, um, to servers. Um, our goal for this semester was to make that system portable. Um, to make it portable, we needed the button board um, so we can access it um, easily. We needed a power board so we can't plug it in. We have, we need a battery pack and we need a distribution board. We needed um, also to implement the program for the button board. Also, we need the helmet to mount everything on. We can't just have it laying around, right? So what we had, we implemented all these um, Things for the power board, we use two DC DC converters um, uh, to split the power to the two Raspberry Pis that we had. Um, we had. By the way, we had a stretch goal, an extra goal that we had was to have a transparent OLED screen to uh, display the information that we needed from the servos. And the things that we can put on the servos, we can have a flashlight like we had last semester which point at different locations. Um, we could implement an IR camera uh, or night vision um, magnification, any one of those things on the servo. Um, that's what the screen was for. And that was a stretch goal um, if, if power was a problem. I mean, if, the, if the, we finished early, that was a stretch goal that we had. Um, but as you can see here, uh, how the system works, um, all we did was add portability uh, things. And we have a display outside um, to show you how it works. It is working. Um, you put the helmet on, um, it tracks your eye, it moves the, we have a light source on there now, um, and it moves the light source uh, wherever you look your eye, where your eye looks. Um, and that's about it. That's our system. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please listen. All right, so I remember from last semester that uh, your system was working very well with green eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. that bad, not, it was not uh, so good at tracking at uh, yeah. or so how did you fix the approach of each? We did not fix that problem. Um, so I can't track my eyes really well because I have really dark eyebrows. My eyelashes are long and they're dark. When they close, they'll go off somewhere else. So Lance, <laughs> so he's good. He can use it all day long. It's perfect tracking. Um, it'll move around with his eyes, so I don't want to call it racist, but. <laughs> 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 um, but we didn't fix that problem, unfortunately. Um, yeah, we couldn't fix that one. We didn't. The main issue that problem was the way the program worked was that it was basically trying to differentiate between uh, black and white. So the problem is with darker skinned people who have uh, darker skin uh, hair and color, what will end up happening is there's a harder time to distinguish between darker and lighter color because what will end up happening is they'll consider your eyebrow a part of it when it doesn't need to, while lens does lighter hair and lighter skin and his dark his eyes are the darker part of his face, they'll automatically uh, the program will see that that's the people and it'll just wash everything else away. Did you do some uh, well, did you look at let's say the military and no related helicopter I just said out there wherever they look, they'll see certain pieces that are detected into their home. Um do you usually need any type of comparison if there are another prototype or benchmark system that you're trying to compare to to try and come up with a better design or cost? Um, what would you base 
Um, right now, for our, our current idea was to our current uh, benchmark was to make the uh, to make the uh, headset portable and easy to use. Um, the idea we have the see-through see -through screen with a stretch goal, and the idea was that we would have uh, the camera would track your eye, and you'd be able to see, and then on top of the screen, it would overlay different information. So we weren't really, we didn't uh, get a chance to research much more into that because it was a stretch goal. Our goal was for, for this semester was to reach the idea of portability, which we did, and then we had about two weeks to try and find the old EP screen, which we got up and running. It would turn on, and we could display colors to it. But the problem was the way the OLED screen was communicating, uh, we couldn't send live video to it. And that was our main issue with it. The only way we could actually display images on the OLED screen was through an SD card. So we were trying our best to find a way of feeding live stream into it, but all we could achieve was uh, different colors. And uh, to more like to really answer your question, as far as comparing it to like a system that exists for like helicopter pilots or anything like that, we don't have access to any of those. So we Comparison. But most of those systems are based on telemeters, checking the position of the head, and using a fixed camera to look at the face. There's, we couldn't really do something like that because that requires them to be sitting in a very particular spot because they will be a certain height, which they would be. The system is mounted on its own, on and on, and take care of everything itself. So, and because our our uh, camera source is also mounted on the head itself, we don't have to worry about accelerometer data as far as the and outside co-located camera, it's with the head. If I look my head left, the camera moves left. But it's really tracking the eye to move left or right, you know, in addition to the head So who's your primary customer? Uh, it could be a, uh, could have some military applications. It could have applications for firefighters, especially with certain forms of the IR. But mainly the key is low cost. When you get low cost, that means more people can get it. Those are main, you know, goals. So many problems with glasses? Yes. The system? Yes. For fun. That's the only time we've got so far. Any other questions? I guess we can thank the speakers.